Today we're going to be rebuilding the calipers on the BMW S1000R 2014. If you haven't taken the calipers off this bike yet, it's literally two 13mm bolts. Make sure you've got a tray underneath and a 12mm spanner. You'll need this bleed nibble to put on your new caliper, so don't lose it. Once your caliper's on the workbench, just remember that you're going to have fluid still in the caliper. So get a tray and drain the fluid out. Once you've taken the fluid out, you can remove the brake pads and then start stripping the caliper. You probably already know how to take the brake pads out. If you press this down and pull on this pin, it should just wiggle out. Then your brake pads will just fall out. If you're in the market for some brake pads, these SBS Sintered pads are the best. Love them. Used them on track loads of times and they are great pads. And you just need to crack off these three pinch bolts. It's a T40. That one is super tight. Trick is put it back on the bike and loosen it when it's on the bike. I've just loosened them off on the bike. Now just spin them out. Also can't recommend enough by getting this piston tool. It is so handy and so easy to get pistons out with this. You can buy it on eBay pretty cheap, so give that a go. There is other methods to getting the pistons out. You can use a old socket and an extension on a ratchet and you sort of put it by the side of the uh, piston like that and turn it and it will unwind the piston. But Honestly, if you're going to keep doing uh, your own caliper builds, you may as well uh, hook up this tool. It's, it's so much easier and for the price, it's worth it. Have an 8mm socket there or a spanner. Loosen it off and it retracts these blades in. Then when you tighten it, these spread out and then catch onto the piston. Show you how to do one. So I've tightened it up and it's holding onto the piston now. And then just turn it and pull it. Really easy. Same for the next one. Can't recommend Powerhouse enough. I've used these guys so many times in the past. For all your brake caliper seals, it's so good. They're really helpful as well if you call them. These are the ones that have just been stripped down. You can see all the dirt, old brake cleaner that's probably never been changed. All the dirt that you just genuinely get on the road. Pistons are in pretty good condition. These bolts, you can just tidy them up with a uh, wire brush if you want to make them look nice, but overall they're perfect, so they're going back. That's the uh, caliper that we've already rebuilt. Looking a lot nicer than uh, that. So we're going to do the same thing. Just use a pick to get those seals out. Thin one at the front, thick one at the back. Now it's time to clean it up. There's various ways to clean the calipers up. Best way, this is one that I hadn't started yet. Best way to clean it all up, I find, is use a little wire brush, a bit of WD-40 or duck oil, and some brake cleaner to go over it after. When you are cleaning them up, just make note of where your seals sit, make sure there's no corrosion in there or in the piston itself. Before and after. Once the calipers are stripped and clean, they should look something like this, if not cleaner. <laughs> it's very simple. Put the seals in here. You've got a little o-ring that goes here as well. Basic. And just get them into the groove. And feed it round. Get 
get a slimmer one. Same again. I always put it in the groove first and then just follow it round by keeping it in the groove. Something along those lines. To clean your pistons, you can use a wire brush, a light wire brush, or you can even use a tiny bit of sandpaper if it's got a bit of corrosion on it, but you want a nice smooth surface that doesn't damage the seals when you put it back in. Your seals will come with some assembly lube, make sure to put those on the seals. Don't forget about your small wiring you get in the kit and it goes here. Once you've put all your seals and your pistons back in and your o-ring, it's time to put it together. Two long bolts, one short bolt, the short one goes in the middle. These bolts are then torqued down. It doesn't say in the Haynes manual. <laughs> 